You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. It's holiday cooking time. That means it's time to get all of your sweet treats ready to eat, right? So today I wanted to take some time to talk a little bit about how to rhyme. No, 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 sorry. That's not how this show is supposed to start. But today I do want to take this some time to talk about the sweeter side of the holidays and talk about some of the medicinal spices and herbs that are in your kitchen cabinet that might be going into some traditional dishes or non-traditional dishes like some apple pie and some pumpkin pie and whatever else you may have going on in this season of feasting. So I hope that this episode makes you salivate even more, inspires you to get out there and cook, and inspires you to use your kitchen cabinet as your very own medicine chest. Welcome to the Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again. With your host, clinical herbalist, Melissa Mutterspa. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Herbalist Path. We're on a mission to inspire a movement for there to be an herbalist in every home again. And speaking of homes and cozy things and all of that fun stuff, it is November 24th. 2020 as I record this episode and I am heavy into the meal planning of things for the upcoming holiday here in the States, which is all about gratitude and thanks and feasting and being with friends and family normally for me. Um, But this year, the friends and family thing isn't quite the same as it has been in years past because we're in the middle of this crazy pandemic thing. Anyways, it's not going to stop me from cooking up some of my favorite dishes and things. And last week I did an episode all about the savory side of the medicines in your kitchen cabinet. 
And today, I want to touch on the sweeter side of things. And it's funny because a lot of the herbs I'm about to talk about are really actually kind of hot and spicy and not all that sweet in general, but they go really well in a lot of our traditional fall dishes like apple pie and pumpkin pie or baked apples and... I don't know, all those yummy, yummy, sweet things. And well, there are these amazing herbs that go into them that also happen to be awesome medicine for people. And I think, you know, it's amazing that today in our society, we can go to the grocery store and you can buy all of these spices and seasonings for your dishes, but it's so easy to just not recognize that that is indeed medicine. And well, let me backtrack on that a little bit. It is medicine when you get really good quality spices. So I do encourage you to try and purchase organically grown spices. And if you can get them from the bulk section at your grocery store, you're much more likely to get some really good quality fresh slash dried herbs, fresher dried herbs, so that you're going to get more of the flavor from them. You're going to get more of the medicinal benefits and potency too. Anyways, uh, let's dig in. <laughs> Maybe there's some puns intended there. Maybe I accidentally said it. Either way, I am ready to talk on this podcast and make myself salivate as I think of the amazing dishes that are going to be made soon. So the first one I wanted to talk about is cinnamon. Yummy, yummy, yummy for my tummy, tummy, tummy. I love cinnamon. And the crazy thing that I always think about when I think about cinnamon is the fact that it's like this tree bark, right? So that to me is crazy. Our, our country alone uses so much cinnamon. I can't even imagine how much is being used all over the world. And I think of these little trees that happen to be native to Sri Lanka and Southwest India and Asia. And I just try and imagine like what it is like to harvest them and how that process goes. To me, that is totally wild. I don't know if you feel that same way, but it's, it's crazy to me. Anyway, so what I have recently learned is that when they go to harvest off of these trees, they peel the inner bark away from the tree and then they let it dry. And then when it dries, it goes into that little curling process where you see those little cutesy wootsy cinnamon sticks with the curly tubes. That little tube is actually called a quill. So I just learned that. And I don't know if you did or not, um, but I think it's pretty cool. And cinnamon also happens to be one of the oldest spices known to man. It was used in ancient Egypt as a beverage flavoring, medicine, and even as an embalming agent. <laughs> what? <laughs> it kind of blew my mind when I learned that. How crazy is that? At one point, cinnamon was so highly treasured that it was worth more than gold. It was mentioned in one of the earliest of Chinese botanical medicine books with references dating to around 2700 before the common era. Cinnamon is mentioned in the Bible and it has been said that the Roman emperor of the first century um, current, of this current era, Nero burned a year's supply of cinnamon at his wife's funeral pyre, funeral pyre to signify the depths of his great loss. Cinnamon became one of the most utilized spices in medieval Europe. So most of the meals that they had in those Middle Ages were prepared in one giant cauldron. I can only imagine how awesome it would be to find one of those cauldrons now. But they would put these massive casseroles in there that had both meat and fruit and veggies and whatever they needed to put in there because that's, that's what they had, right? And oftentimes they would use the cinnamon to help all of those various flavors blend together and be tastier. So then the demand of cinnamon became so high, it was one of the main reasons that many explorers took off on their expeditions, like the Dutch and the Portuguese particularly were on the hunt for more cinnamon. There are over 100 varieties of cinnamon for you to choose from. No indecision happening there. <laughs> 
I'll help you out a little bit, though. The most commonly found on your grocery store shelves is cinnamomum cassia, so a cassia cinnamon. And cassia is a little bit more of a spicier or pungent cinnamon that is used in more of the savory dishes when cooking. And then there's also a Ceylon cinnamon, which is cinnamomum verum. It's got a bit of a sweeter flavor. The Ceylon cinnamon is the stuff that you're going to want to use in all the delicious dirt, desserts and such you're going to be creating. And they can also be used in similar ways when it comes to their medicinal value, which cinnamon is absolutely a powerhouse in that realm. So some of the things cinnamon can do, the list is long really, but it's a great circulatory stimulant. So it can be really nice, especially if you get cold in the winter easily and your toes and your fingers are cold, a nice circulatory warming, a circulatory stimulant or herb that is warming as well will help increase blood flow to those extremities of your fingers and toes and therefore warm you up quite nicely as well. It is relaxing for smooth muscle, muscle tissue, particularly in the digestive tract. It happens to be a carminative, which is a big fancy herb geek speak for helps to alleviate gassiness, bloating, and various aspects of tummy upset. And it also helps promote healthy digestion overall. It's a diaphoretic, meaning that it's going to help your body to sweat. It can help you expel toxins via your urine. It's got some antibiotic properties, and it's even been known to be helpful with ulcers and in respiratory issues. In cases of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, there have been a multitude of studies that show taking cinnamon on a daily basis can work wonders in regulating your blood sugar and blood pressure levels. Uh, ideally, you would want to aim for about two grams of cinnamon per day. I like to just add a dash of cinnamon into my coffee every morning because, yes, I love my cup of coffee in the morning. That's a really nice way to go about it. Um, it can, that's another reason I like to put cinnamon into my hibiscus heart song. One, because it's delicious. Two, because um, it's nice and warming and that's so lovely to have in a tea, especially right now, but also because of its ability to help regulate the blood sugar and blood pressure. And in that particular blend, I use it with hibiscus and hawthorn berry, which also as a trio, it's kind of a powerhouse trio. And it's so yummy. Um, you can use cinnamon if you're dealing with fever or flu or maybe even the flu dealing with a fever and even diarrhea included because it's a tonifying herb. It's going to be slightly drying and can help to bring all of that loose stool together, which I know is no fun to talk about, but it's reality in several people's lives, unfortunately. And it's going to help with like the cold chills that you get when you've got a fever too. And it's, it's also nice because you can make it into a nice respiratory tea with some honey and some lemon and cinnamon. And it becomes really, really easy if you've got kids that are sick to get them to drink that down because it's, it's tasty, you know, um, kiddos don't want to drink the yucky stuff necessarily. So cinnamon is also used as a tooth powder or a toothpaste. It's got a lot of antimicrobial properties to it, so it's going to help get rid of harmful bacteria and just help to tone your gum and gums and other tissues in the mouth. And again, did I mention cinnamon is straight yummy? I love it. Go ahead and reach out to me and let me know how you like to use cinnamon. So another herb that I love during this time of year in particular is cardamom. Hey, I wanted to take a quick pause to show some love and gratitude to our sponsors of the Herbalist Path podcast who make this show possible for me and possible for you too. So here it goes. Medicinal mushrooms are all the rage these days, if you didn't know already. And with great reason, because they are powerful medicine that can improve your health and your life in so many different ways when they're well-made. 
Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of stuff on the market that isn't going to be so effective. And that's why you need to find a brand that you can actually trust. For me, that brand is Whole Sun Wellness. And this is the creation of a brilliant woman and fellow mama, Jamie Bonfiglio. She's an international mushroom educator that has been working in the medicinal mushroom industry for years. And this is when she saw firsthand how many other companies take shortcuts when it comes to their products. And Jamie wasn't having it. She set out to build her company the right way. Whole Sun Wellness is here to raise the industry standards so those crap mushrooms on the market aren't getting into your body or your family's body. Whole Sun Wellness is the first company to test and report nutritional facts for all of their extracts. They go beyond industry standards every step of the way, from sourcing to extraction and final testing. And as the owners of the largest medicinal mushroom farm in the United States, Whole Sun Wellness is taking control of their supply chain for the highest quality and absolute full transparency. They're even the first company to include pure mycelium extract in every single product. So when you're thinking of getting medicinal mushrooms for you and your family, Whole Sun Wellness is exactly the ones you want. Also, be sure to check out their new Mycolites. These are the world's first dissolvable electrolyte tablets. They're featuring functional mushroom extracts that'll give you more energy, more stamina, and recovery as well. And who couldn't use all of that? The other thing is, they are these adorable little mushroom-shaped tablets, and they come in like a little Altoids box, but way cooler than Altoids because they're Mycolites. Anyways, head to wholesunwellness.com to grab yourself some Mycolites and all of the other functional medicinal mushrooms that you and your family need. And of course, you can grab that link right here in the show notes now. Extra M's there for the yum factor. (laughs) And cardamom actually grows wild in India, Malaysia, and Ceylon. It's been used in Chinese medicinal and um, used in Chinese medicine, excuse me, and also in India since there have been records kept of such things, which makes cardamom one of the oldest spices in the world. The ancient Egyptians chewed cardamom seeds as a tooth cleaner, and the Greeks and Romans would use it frequently as a perfume. In the Arabian Nights, it's commonly referenced to as being an aphrodisiac even. So that nice little perfume with the good breath, (laughs) it's going to turn you on or someone on for you. One One of those ways. So think about that. Um, the ancient Indians used it as a cure for obesity and it has been used to aid digestion since ancient times. So it is also another carminative to ease gassiness and bloating and indigestion, and it helps to improve your circulation overall, gets things moving and warms you up from the inside out. And again, super yum. I mean, talking about these culinary herbs in my podcast, it just makes me hungry every time I do it. Um, So maybe I got to stop that. I don't know. No, I like it. It's fun. Uh, Another little favorite for this time of year that you might be using in some of your cooking preparations are those little cloves, those little guys that you poke into the holiday ham, or maybe you use it in a chai blend or something like that. But I recently learned that clove buds are actually an unopened flower bud of the clove tree. So they're handpicked when they're nice and pink, and then they dry them until they turn that deep brown color that you're so accustomed to seeing. And cloves have this oily compound that is key to their medicinal, nutritional benefits and their strong taste. Clove is also native to the Spice Islands of Indonesia, which are these amazing volcanic islands that I cannot wait to explore someday. They've been consumed in Asia for more than 2,000 years. And back in 200 BCE, the Chinese would use the cloves as a breath mint with the intention to not offend the emperor when visiting the high courts. It was commonly used also to help mask the flavor of poorly preserved foods. 
So now I'm thinking about this giant ham that is like rotting, but somebody stuck some cloves in it to make it yummy. <laughs> okay, I guess it worked. Um, cloves are rich in this compound called eugenol, and it's been shown to prevent the toxicity of environmental pollutants. It's also been shown to prevent digestive tract cancers and can be a great uh, friend to have in the treatment of joint pain. I have used it quite a few times for dental issues for its antimicrobial properties and its kind of numbing pain relieving properties. I'll use like a little bit of clove essential oil and a carrier oil and put that on the toothache area and it, it, it's like a local anesthetic to just numb that area. You can also try just chewing on the clove bud itself. And it takes me back to when I was a young teenager exploring all the things in the world. And I would tr I try to smoke those clove cigarettes, which are just horrible for you to smoke. But I tried it anyways, because that's the kind of kid I was. And I remember my lips getting numb every time. And it's funny now thinking about that. Um, that wasn't part, supposed to be part of this podcast, but it is now. <laughs> Next up, I want to talk about ginger. And like, yeah, ginger's definitely not so sweet. It is a hot, hot herb, but she does add a great kick of deliciousness to some of our favorite sweet dishes in the cooler seasons and for the holidays. And Despite what your grocery store sign may say, uh, ginger is not a root after all. It is the rhizome of the plant. It's native to India, China, and Asia. And there's been literature found from ancient times in Chinese and Indian and Middle Eastern countries where it has been loved for its culinary, aromatic, and medicinal properties. The ancient Romans first began importing ginger from China about 2,000 years ago. It was a common thing among the medieval Renaissance trades and was one of the spices used against the plague. I don't know about you, but suddenly I want to go make a cup of fresh ginger rhizome tea. <laughs> I wonder what, a, what kind of effect it had against the plague way back when and what it could do for us today in the midst of this crazy pandemic we're in right now. Um, I certainly have been taking a lot of ginger because I love it so much and I know it's got some amazing, um, immune boosting properties to it. It is a, a great immune stimulant. Um, one other cool thing that I learned when I was doing research for this episode is that in English pubs and taverns, barkeeps would put out a small container of ginger powder to sprinkle into the beer. And that was the origin of ginger ale. I am so thankful for those barkeeps. I love ginger ale, especially like a really good quality one. Um, ginger, not only is it amazing and have a really long, rich history, it's got a lot of medicinal properties, like alleviating the symptoms of gastrointestinal stress. It is yet another carminative, meaning that it's going to help ease gassiness and bloating and tummy upset. And it even does a really great job of relieving intestinal spasms and relaxing and soothing the entire intestinal tract, which could be really helpful during these feasting times, right? It also is great for just overall digestive stimulation. And I really like to use it with like cardamom and cinnamon, a little bit of black pepper. Um, I'm actually about to tonight after I record this podcast, I'm going to go make some golden milk macaroons is one of my dessert offerings for this holiday. And it's going to be ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, black pepper, turmeric, maple syrup, coconut, and some other magical deliciousness in there. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, ginger is definitely used a lot for motion sickness, especially with seasickness, and as a replacement for Dramamine. I hear about that all the time, and a few years back for my partner Chris's birthday slash our anniversary, yes, our birthday, it's birth um, I got him to ditch his friends over 10 years ago to come have dinner with me, and we've been in love ever since. But anyways, we got to take a trip out on the Pacific coast to go do some fishing on the sea, and I had never been out on a boat on the sea, and I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to take this natural 
away and I got me a ton of crystallized ginger and like had this huge baggie with me to take on the boat. I'm not going to take Dramamine. That's not natural. Well, I spent the entire fishing trip laughing as I also vomited off the front deck of the boat the entire time. Um, so I'm going to say, based on my personal experience, that the ginger was not as effective as the Dramamine because everybody else in my party took the Dramamine but me. So <laughs> that's just my experience. But I have read about studies where the, the ginger is supposed to be significantly more effective. So interesting stuff. Um, ginger can also be really helpful in cases of nausea and vomiting during pregnancy, and it can really be helpful for menstrual cramps too. It's been shown to ease pain and inflammation for, the, for those that are suffering from arthritis, and it really has shown to improve their overall mobility when arthritic people are taking ginger on a regular basis. It's got a great affinity, not only for the digestive system, like we talked about, but also for the respiratory system, circulatory system. And it's amazing during cold and flu to help get like the stuck mucus flowing. So it makes a really great tea. It'll keep you nice and warm. It'll stimulate your circulation. And it even does a good job of easing a sore throat. So I find that ginger tea is best with the fresh root and the fresh juice, juice, sorry, the fresh rhizome, um, and the fresh juice with some honey. You're going to just get the most maximum benefits of the medicine out of it when it's fresh. Yeah, I could talk about the medicinal benefits of ginger for quite a long time, but I don't think we got enough time in the show. I just want you to listen to this while you're cooking up your feasts and making your desserts and all kinds of nice things. Um, I'd love to hear some of your favorite ways to take ginger. How do you sweeten that up, it, up, it up? What are some of your favorite ginger recipes? Please reach out and let me know. And I will begin talking a little bit about another great friend of mine. We're going to switch it up a little bit. We're going to get out of those hotter countries and areas. We are going to move over to the Mediterranean and talk about another favorite herb of mine that seems to be like a, on a completely different spectrum from all the other herbs and spices I've talked about so far today. Uh, we're going to talk about peppermint and all the mints, really. Uh, they are native to the Mediterranean regions, and its origins were immortalized in a Greek myth that speaks of the tale of the nymph Mynthe, who got Hades' eye and attention. When that happened, Hades' jealous wife Persephone attacked Mynthe and was trying to trample her to death when Hades then turned her into the herb mint, and mint was then sacred to him forever. Mint is also a symbol of hospitality and wisdom. Pliny had said, the very smell reanim reanimates the spirit. I agree. Ancient Hebrews scattered mint on their synagogue floors so that every step that went in through the floor would make the smell of peppermint permeate the entire air. The Japanese have prized the distilled peppermint oil for centuries and even treated it all the way to turning it into menthol. The ancient, Greek, the ancient Greeks and Romans would rub their tables with mint before their guests arrived, and the pilgrims brought the mint to the Americas on the Mayflower, um, which, of course, brought the pilgrims to this beautiful country and then changed this land and the native peoples of this land forever. And I know I am creating this podcast right before the U.S. celebrates Thanksgiving. And, you know, I, I do, I, I got to say it, I, I find this all sad as we celebrate Thanksgiving and the times that I'd say did not uh, make the best of what this country and the people that were native to it were. Um, I feel like they've been treated horribly for centuries and it's not okay. And, you know, the native peoples had a very deep connection to this land and to the plants of this land. And I think that is beautiful. And I find it heartbreaking and sad that we 
our, our, our society and culture for hundreds of years have trampled all over it in so many ways. However, not to be Debbie Downer there, I do cherish the time that I get to spend with my family. I love celebrating that all I have to be grateful for today. Um, and I have a lot to be grateful for. I do get to spend a lot of time outdoors in nature. I have a beautiful family. I have a lot of people that love me and I have you listening to this podcast. I am so grateful that you are taking the time to learn more about using plants as medicine so that we can make some sort of return to this earth. I really do believe that we all need it, and even more so, this precious planet of ours needs it. And I think we can make the change. So I am really grateful to be recording this podcast for you, and I hope that you continue to tune in and, and dig the podcast. So, yeah, I also think that we need more mint in our celebrations. It is really wonderful for tummy upset. So it's another one of those carminative herbs that ease the gassiness and bloating. And that's going to be really common during giant feasts when you're overeating and perhaps even taking in foods that aren't so good for you and your body. And this is one of the reasons I use peppermint in my digestive tea because... Um, because it's a carminative and it's also really rich in bitters, which help to get your digestive juices flowing, like your bile, your stomach acid, and your enzymes. And they help to facilitate, facilitate the breakdown of your foods and help you to be able to better absorb all of those amazing nutrients you're getting in your dishes. So I try and bring a, a tin of digestives to pretty much all of my holiday meals and celebrations. Because it's also yummy, and that's another reason I love peppermint. And it can ease spasms of the intestinal tract and the smooth muscles. It's known to uplift your mood on a dark day, and it can even keep you more alert. That's one of, like, those two things and its flavor are one of the reasons I use it in my Where Is My Mind tea, like with the rosemary and mint combo there. Just that extra pep in your step, and the rosemary has this great affinity for improving memory, and then I do go to cola and ginkgo biloba and nettles and all these other really, really cool plants. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why peppermint gets to go into Where Is My Mind. Peppermint's also really helpful when you're dealing with cold and flu. It helps to open the pores of your body, which allows the heat to dissipate, which is another way of calling an herb a diaphoretic, promoting a sweat. Um, and I like to use it to help break up, like, when you're all stuffy and super congested. I'll do it as, like, an herbal steam, or maybe I'll make a little herbal chest rub with it. I love peppermint. It's another one of those that I could talk about for a long time in regards to its medicinal benefits, but right now I'm just dreaming of going home and making myself a peppermint cocoa with raw cacao powder. I make, um, I make coconut milk from scratch and I'll put the raw cacao powder, a dash of cinnamon. Tonight I'm going to put in some peppermint and some maple syrup. And it's just this crazy nutrient dense, delicious hot cocoa. And I can even get my kiddo to drink it, which is pretty amazing. And then also tonight I'm going to be making some golden milk macaroons. Like I told you about earlier with the cinnamon, the cardamom, the nutmeg, the turmeric, and a bunch of other deliciousness. And I would love to hear what you're making for dessert this year. What are you playing with in the food land? Are you using any of the herbs and spices I've talked about in this show? Or even in my last show where it was all about the savory herbs? Reach out to me. Let me know. I really want to hear from you. And if you enjoyed the show, please, please, please leave me a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps others to be able to tune into the show a bit more, and then it helps us together to make herbalism spread like wildflowers. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you on the next show. Have yourself a fantastic bunch of holidays. Remember to take care of yourself so you can take care of others, and remember to spread love. Take care. Bye. Thanks for joining us today on The Herbalist's Path, where we're on a mission to inspire a movement where there's an herbalist in every home, again. If you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe, rate, and review to help others find us. As a thank you, click the link in the show notes to access a delicious and power-packed elderberry syrup recipe. 
We'd love to see you on Facebook, too, in our new Herbalists Path community group. Together, we can make herbalism hashtag spread like wildflowers. Wishing you all a lovely day. Bye for now. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.